Hello children, I hope you all are doing great. I am your online tutor Aisha. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we are going to learn about lesson 1 in computers, which is categories of computers and computer languages. So what is that we are going to study in this chapter? We are going to learn about different types of computers, different types of computer languages like machine language, assembly language, high level language, fourth generation language and we are also going to discuss about the language processors. Let us start with the today's topic. So children, you know right, um, for different places we carry different types of bags. When you are going to school, you carry school bag. When you go to sports, you carry your sports bag. In the similar way, depending on your need or requirement, we have an option to select different types of computers as well. Okay, so how these computers are designed and categorized? These computers are designed and categorized with respect to their size, speed, storage capacity and cost. So in today's class, we are going to learn about the different types of computers we are having. So what are the different types of computers? We have micro computers, we have mini computers, we have mainframe computers and we also have supercomputers. Let us start with micro computers. So as you can see in this image, we will understand what are the main features of the microcomputers. So these microcomputers are small in size and they cost less. They are usually designed for personal use. That's why they are called as personal computers or PCs. Some of the examples for the microcomputers include Commodore 64 and IBM PC. These microcomputers are mainly used in homes, schools, offices, shops and banks. Okay, so again, these microcomputers based on their usage can be categorized under various categories like desktop computers, laptop computers, tablet computers, palm top computers, handheld devices and embedded systems. Okay, we will start with uh, the first category which is called as under microcomputers which is desktop computer. So these desktop computers are designed to fit comfortably on the top of the desk. That's why it is called as desktop computers. These desktop computers comes with several units such as monitor, keyboard, CPU, mouse and all these components are interconnected to form a single unit. Okay. Now we will move on to the second category of the microcomputer which is laptop computers. So these laptop computers are small in size and they can be easily placed on the lap. So they are called as laptop computers. They are usually battery operated and they are very portable. Okay, we can perform all the actions which we can do with the help of the desktop computers, right? The same thing can be done by laptops also. So these laptops are much expensive than the desktop computers. These computers are usually used by the people who will be traveling a lot. So whenever you are not using the laptop, you can simply fold down the screen of the laptop and you can keep it in the laptop bag. So usually these laptops will be having 13 to 15 inch screen size. Okay. Now we will move on to the next category which is tablet computers. Okay. These computers are smaller and lighter compared to the laptop computers but they are bigger compared to the smartphones. So in desktop, laptops and all we have keyboard and mouse but in case of tablets we use touch screen technology. These are, uh, touch, they are having touch sensitive screen which can be used for typing as well as navigation. Okay, These tablet computers usually come with 7 inch, 8 inch and 10 inch screen size and some of the usages include we can use tablet for reading ebooks, watching movies, viewing photos, browsing the net. After studying about uh, the tablet computer, we will move on to the next uh, microcomputer category which is palm top computers. This palm top computer is small device that can be fit in the palm of your hand. So we call them as palm top computer. So whatever the features computer has, everything a palm top uh, computer also has okay you, they usually comes with a small screen with a compressed keyboard hmm? okay so the next um, micro computer is we will move on to the handheld devices so as the name suggests these handheld devices are small in size and they can be easily held in the hand that's why they are called as handheld devices so what are the some examples for handheld devices like the smartphones and 
tablet computers they can be conveniently carried in the pocket itself they can be they can we can keep them in the hand or we can carry them in our pocket okay they are very small the handheld computers are also called as personal digital assistants okay so under handheld devices we have smartphones and gaming consoles so these are the some of the examples for the handheld devices so you know right children smartphone it that is a handheld device which combines the features of the personal computer with the features of the mobile phone so what and all you can do it with the help of the smartphone you can make the calls you can receive the calls you can do text messaging you can do we can send the emails we can uh, do web browsing we can capture the images we can view the videos and we can play games and many more things right there are so many uses of the smartphones the next handheld device is gaming console so what is this gaming console it is a device which is used to play interactive video games okay so these uh, gaming consoles can be connected to the television or to a computer or even it can be connected to the smartphone so some of the examples for the gaming console include Microsoft Xbox, Sony PlayStation, Nintendo GameCube and Nintendo Y. Okay. Now we will move on to the next microcomputer type which is category which is embedded systems. So what is an embedded system? It is the one which has computer hardware with software embedded or implanted into a larger device. So what are the larger devices which has embedded systems embedded in it like the televisions, washing machines, microwaves, printers, dishwashers, medical equipments. So all these are the devices which internally have embedded systems within them. Okay. So these embedded systems are also called as microcontrollers. So one of the examples where we are using the embedded system is the microwave oven. So what is embedded system doing inside the microwave oven? It is taking the instructions from the user through the keypad which is available here on the right side. We are setting the time there and inside the oven we are keeping all the ingredients in a bowl and we are setting some time. So once we start the oven right, it will um, uh, instruct or command the microwave to perform specific action and once the timer is uh, off, once the time is uh, done, you can see that your noodles are ready and you can simply take it out. Okay. So this is the action which uh, the embedded system has uh, in the has instructed the oven to do okay so this is one of the example similar way we can use embedded system inside the washing machines dishwashers and many 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 other things like we have seen okay so uh, after learning about the microcomputers we will move on to the next type of computer which is mini computers so we will see what are the main features of the mini computers so these mini computers are bigger in size compared to the micro computers. Typically they comes with the size of the refrigerator. Okay. So another big feature of the mini computer is like they are having higher processing speed compared to the micro computer and they are costlier than the micro computers. Okay. These computers are capable to support 4 to 200 users simultaneously. That means 4 to 200 users can use the same mini computer at a time. Okay. So where these mini computers are mainly used for, they are mainly used in banks, universities and other big organizations. Some of the examples for the mini computers include PDP-8, HP-2100, Microvax-3100. Okay, now we will move on to the next uh, computer type which is mainframe computers. So what are the main features of the mainframe computers? These computers are very powerful. They are big in size with a large memory and a high speed. Okay. They are designed to handle large amount of data. More than hundreds of users can use the mainframe computer simultaneously. Okay. They are, they are usually used in the networked environment. So these microcomputers are very very expensive and are mainly used for bulk data processing in big business organizations, universities, banks, scientific laboratories, airlines and railway ticket reservations, stock exchange markets etc. Some of the examples for the mainframe computers include IBM Z series, PDP-10 and System Z10. 
we will move to the last computer type which is supercomputers okay so what are the main features of the supercomputers they are the most powerful computers with a huge processing speed these computers are used for weather forecasting space research satellite control etc okay some of the examples include CREY1 CREY2 param tinhe2 sunbe tiolite etc okay so in today's class we have seen different types of computers okay can you tell me which are the different types of computers we come we came across today so we have microcomputers we have mini computers we studied about mainframe computers and we have supercomputers children i hope you understood today's topic we will move on to the next topic which is about uh, the computer languages in tomorrow's in the next class okay i hope this video is uh, helpful for you children so if you like it you can simply like share and subscribe to my ch channel thank you